Yes. Uh, from my voice, from my appearance, it looks like I was partying hard yesterday. I was indeed not. I have a one-year-old that refused to allow me to sleep. So just uh, so I'm mentally uh, all here for this talk, definitely. Um, so uh, you guys already know me. I, I usually, when I make stuff for this conference, I always end up making at least twice the amount of material that I have time to go over. So in a panic, I had to take basically two hours worth of stuff and try to cram it into 40 minutes. So I'm going to go kind of briefly over some stuff. But obviously, the, the biggest question here, and I won't go too much into the whole concept and terminology, but the question I get a lot is uh, previous layout, what's the difference? Uh, in many ways, it's serving the same function, which is like you're, at the end of the day, just trying to create shots to you know, uh, try to communicate the story. But uh, previous... Uh, well, layout, basically the definition of layout is um, you're making the shots with all the sets, the, uh, the characters, the props, uh, fully designed and rigged and all of that stuff. But, you know, the reality of the situation is that that is like quite a hard line in the sand to draw and, you know, it's like up to a certain degree, of course. But the other end of that spectrum is uh, things are happening in parallel. Uh, there's some storyboards there. You have to figure out the shots. Uh, are, is the character designed kinda? What does kinda mean? Is it rigged? No? Okay, then I guess I have to rig, but then I have to save that as a separate character, as a previous character, and I'll just slap something there. Is that proper? No? It's not even designed? Okay, well, I guess I'll do something. And so um, there's pros and cons to it. Previous has way more flexibility, creativity, and whatnot but it's way more disposable art. You're like throwing stuff at the wall, see what sticks kind of a thing. And you can just assume that a lot of the stuff that you'll make there will not make the cut. Uh, however, some of the stuff that will make the cut, it will uh, then infer a lot of the design choices that will go along the way. So you might create a, a shitty version of a prop very quickly and then realize down the line, uh, now the designer is actually looking at the proportions of the shitty thing you made and being like, yeah, that actually was, you know, and then you're like, oh my God, <laughs> okay. Uh, so I just wanted to give, throw that out there because I called this previous slash layout and it's, uh, so it's, it's a whole complicated rabbit hole that uh, I'll just do a separate talk about or whatever. Uh, but for this, I wanted to do more of a demonstration. Uh, there's no way in hell I can do like a full-on thing for you live. There's just no way. Uh, but I wanted to do then kind of like one of those baking shows where it's like you do like three ingredients and they're like, well, I have here prepared and then you kind of, you know, jump some steps ahead. So, but I wanted to create some kind of a demonstration of uh, I get handed some kind of a script just text on a page and then what the hell is the thought process and the different things that can go on until it's an actual shot um, but for that I need some kind of a script and I you know just slapped something together quickly I had some you know constraints I was like okay let's make this simple uh, it doesn't have dialogue no vocals it's just like a couple of characters I also wanted to uh, make two versions this is already getting a bit ambitious for the limited time I have and it was because I thought that was the best way to illustrate to you guys uh, the thought process without thinking about the camera itself and that being a huge element of the storytelling, but then a treatment where it's more shot driven. Uh, this ended up being the two hour version, of course, but I will still cram it in here and uh, whoever's next, I'm sorry, lock the door. Um, <laughs> So this is what I came up with. This is, this is going to be the only boring time where I actually read to you guys something. It's only half a page. Uh, it's not the be my best work or anything. It doesn't need to be hilarious. But I, you know, I had a couple of things I wanted to throw in there. So uh, interior ice cream parlor day. Rex. So it's Rex and Jay from Sprite Fright. I just grabbed those two guys. So Rex sits by himself at a table. Jay walks over, places a cup with two scoops of ice cream in front of Rex and walks away. Rex is delighted, grabs the sprinkle shaker. That's a, if you don't know what a sprinkle shaker is, I now realize culturally, a lot of people don't know what that is. It's like a salt shaker with sprinkles in it. This was a mistake in hindsight, but okay. <laughs> I learned that later. This is not a thing people recognize as a thing. Um, and he taps a few sprinkles on top. Jay returns to the table with a massive ice cream sundae for himself. So Jay is a small guy. He, he gives himself a huge uh, ice cream. Rex is shocked at the size of it and how his ice cream now looks tiny. Ray is pulling up a chair, getting comfortable, and Rex's envy is building up into proper anger. 
So just as Jay is about to take his first bite, Rex furiously stands up and towers over Jay. Rex reali uh, whoa. Jay realizes his mistake and apologetically spins the table, so it's kind of a swiveling table, so that the ice creams swap and Rex gets the big one. So this is very basic, like it's not even that funny, but it has a uh, visual comedy. That was one of the things. And I wanted to play with size also being a factor and the fact they don't run around like crazy. So it's a, a relatively constrained area. So first off, uh, I would start just identifying what are the things in here because uh, I'm going to treat this slightly more like a previously thing. Um, none of this has been designed or made, and but I'm already being like while it's being figured out, I'm being asked to come up with some visuals. So I'm writing down all the different things that need to be made, and then I just make my own thing. And you know, I made my own thing here out of some primitives, whatnot. It kind of looks like an ice cream, but I don't know. I you know we didn't have concept art or whatever. Um, and you know, you just have some chairs, some tables. Oh, it's a big ice cream, small ice cream, and the infamous sprinkle shaker. Um, so slap it all together in uh, in one file and in one set. And so this is kind of the thing you have to work with. Now remember, because this is slightly more previsy, uh, a lot of these things are perhaps then not fully defined. Like I set the height of that table or the size of it or the shape of it or whatnot. This may not be what the final design is going to be, but uh, if everything is going well, then the designer is actually going to take a look at that and be like, you know what, like 80% of that, yeah, it's going to whatever. Uh, sometimes it works that way. Sometimes uh, the design for story reasons needs to be different and then you adjust. <clears throat> but so here I first want to do kind of the theatrical treatment of this, which is we're going to lock up that camera. I'm going to treat this kind of like a Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello kind of a thing. So uh, everybody here, including me, was not born when the, these guys were performing. So I have a uh, you know, great sense of reference here. Um, so uh, first thing I would do is write down kind of a, a, a list of beats based on kind of what I'm seeing in the script. And uh, this uh, this is like a whole rabbit hole, by the way, of like me not liking some terminology in the industry, partially because it's confusing. So the word beats gets used for a lot of different things uh, with a lot of different definitions. And even within, if, within itself, like you have stuff like a uh, story beat. Well, story beat is a very flexible terminology. Uh, you know, uh, Nemo gets lost. Dad finds Nemo. Well, story's done, two beats. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, you can also break it down into smaller chunks. So it becomes this flexible thing. So I want to just uh, clarify what I mean in this case by beats. Uh, I mean beats of information that are coming to the viewer. So you, you, you're you kind of uh, catering it to the viewer one beat at a time. So this is kind of what I came up with, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can kind of see the gist of it. So it's a very you know, uh, shorthand way for me to just have it down one by one because the rule of thumb in filmmaking is one information at a time. When you have like, unless there's like some chaos going on, but even in that case, that chaos is one bit of information because a normal human being can only look at one thing at a time and ingest one thing at a time. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry about that. This is why also VR gets really tricky. You're looking at the wrong thing and now the information is lost. Um, so, you know, Rex sitting in an ice cream parlor, Jay walks to me with an uh, ice cream, Jay puts the cup in front of Rex. So I'm just kind of creating these beats. And you can uh, kind of, depending on what you're going for, split it into two things or combine things into one. It's kind of up to you, but uh, this is roughly the state I kind of left it in. And then, as I said before, this is kind of the floor plan. I'm just going to lock off that camera and I'm going <coughs> to go over how I, how I might do a treatment of this uh, in the Blender file. Oh my God, I have pre-prepared this file. Um, so, you know, certain things that I want to maybe perhaps highlight. Um, if you're, you know, if you're doing previous layout, doesn't matter what, I would highly recommend that before you start your shot, um, first off, just think about how many bones you're going to touch. How many bones are you going to use? Because uh, especially if this is a fully rigged character and it comes with all bells and whistles and whatnot, there's a lot of bones you will never ever need for what you're doing. So if I was actually animating this, I would also use a different set of bones. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. And the rule of thumb with layout, with previous, you use as few as you need. 
And uh, partially it's because then, you know, the, the mental model of how many things you're moving around is smaller and more uh, easily, um, well, you remember it better. Uh, but also, as you're manipulating stuff, you see that uh, there's often, often cluster of extra bones and whatnot. And uh, if you do something like using the selection sets and you create your own, you know, layout selection set, uh, oh, yay, now I don't accidentally fumble around and, you know, click the wrong bone and whatnot. And uh, for this, as a reminder of how useful this is, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, for, for uh, Rex, the big guy, I'm going to do this. And for Jay, I'm not going to do it intentionally, just to remind myself how infuriating it is to just use the thing. Uh, I regret that decision because, holy shit, uh, this was a nightmare of clicking the wrong bone uh, half the time. Um, why did I do that? I don't know. I, I thought it would be an interesting, like, uh, yeah, experiment. Uh, so, anywho, uh, obviously, you know, I, I, first thing I did is like, just like a couple of the steps that I did right from the get-go. Okay, I sit these guys down and I'm figuring out also, like, I think I already like try to readjust the height of the chairs or whatnot because I realized when they sit down, it uh, kind of looked a little bit funky with it. Um, but one thing I do like to do, by the way, with previous and layout and whatnot, I like to do this thing that maybe it's laughable to some people, but I'll make a plane, I'll do an array modifier and just make it be uh, semi-transparent. And that is like my way of creating like this feeling of depth to it. And it's not necessarily me like stepping over the boundaries of like going into lighting or anything, but it's just more like uh, for readability's sake, uh, it allows, you know, because everything's supposed to be so simple, I'm not actually rendering things, I'm just doing like previews. Uh, it separates the backdrop a little bit better because I know at the end of the day that's kind of what's going to happen anyway. Uh, and then this, you know, my frames will read slightly better. Depends on what you're doing, of course. Uh, then one of the first things I would consider is where to place the camera. So obviously, you know, this is too low. Uh, but then you ask yourself, like, where do I start? Because I want to do a lot of A-B testing and whatnot. Um, as a rule of thumb, if you don't know if you have no idea, just like start at the eye height. And obviously these two guys have like two eye heights. So I was like kind of splitting in the middle. Just start there. And then because you're kind of making a statement if it's lower than the character looking up or above and looking down. So before you do that, try to go like kind of that middle ground that is more neutral and then try to A-B test some stuff. So here I am figuring out the lens choice because I am not a, you know, here there's like, it's like a 35 and it's giving me a lot more information about the backdrop and whatnot, but I'm not sure it's isolating them enough. I'm so sorry. This probably looks tiny for you guys. Okay. That's fine. It's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this is me like rearranging things. This is a 60 millimeter. And now I'm back at the 35 because I'm realizing uh, I need to test the, like, what are the outermost boundaries of what is going to happen? Well, I know that Jay is going to come here and he's going to hand him the ice cream. Okay. And uh, this tall guy is going to stand up and tower over him. So I know no matter what, I'm going to have to allow uh, it to uh, him not to clip the frame. Uh, so I'm kind of, you know, in this, uh, you know, kind of theatrical version where the camera does, is just kind of capturing the entire thing. Uh, this is kind of where I ended up. And then it's a matter of actually finding, now I'm going to use that word in a different way because I'm an idiot. The beats, but this is not the same beat. So this is kind of the, now I'm talking about the equivalent of uh, if this were kind of more of a storyboard thing. So I mean like drawings. I mean like... I need, I, I need new words for some of the vocabulary is not great. Like we keep reusing very similar words for stuff. So, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to use as few, I mean, I guess poses is another way. This is not really, uh, uh, as few as possible. And this is like my treatment of being like, no, this is going to be as simple as possible. I'm not even going to do uh, the, the facials. I'm not going to do the hands, you know, like the fingers. This is going to be the cheapest version of this possible. So I know that, uh, that Jay is going to come over, you know, and then uh, give him the ice cream and he's going to walk away. Rex is going to do the sprinkle shaker thing, just so you see some depth to this thing. Um, 
Jay comes back with a massive one, sits down, Rex is angry and stands up, and then uh, Jay kind of pushes the table. This is the only time I actually have a little bit more information in the, the little beats here, which is nyeh, 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 nyeh. Just because if it's in a one frame, it's like slightly confusing when you play it. But in any case, this, this was like, okay, let's do this bare minimum, and then does it work? Uh, so I put it together in an edit, and I'll just play it to you guys here. You can already tell it's a bit dull, like because the question, like my role here, like the job that I'm trying to do is convey the idea and vet it. Whether or not that idea is good or not is slightly irrelevant because like if I don't even convey the idea itself and give it a chance and give just enough information for that idea to be there, then uh, it has already failed anyway. But if I give just enough information that the idea is there visually, without me like actually just animating this thing, then I find that balancing point, and then it might turn out that, oh, the thing actually wasn't funny, and then you're like, well, shit, you know, but I gave it a chance at least. Um, so here is me doing like a version that is maybe more detailed. And in this case, I did allow myself to do some, uh, you know, facial work here. But uh, it's very minimal. It's just like, and you know, uh, I think I even like grabbed a couple of poses like from the pose library, just like the, there were a couple of them there. And it's just to give a smile, to give a frown and, and that kind of stuff. But I'm doing as little as possible just so it doesn't become, you know, I don't want to slide into actually be doing real animation work. Also, the posing to me is bare minimum. Uh, if I were actually doing a real blocking pass on this in animation, the posing needs to be much stronger and whatnot. But I'm vetting the idea, that's the thing. Uh, so here you see there's more information in, for example, Jay walking, he's covering some distance. So having those extra steps in that, like that information in there um, is kind of crucial when it comes to the editing and I'll show you later why. But here we have all these beats. We, you know, we have actually the information that you know what, Rex is happy about being served that ice cream. Like, that's, that wasn't very obvious before. Um, and that's kind of crucial to the storytelling. Whether or not that smile is an amazing, appealing smile, you know, done by an animator or not, that doesn't really matter. So we have, you know, shaking the sprinkles, and then this massive one. And you see here, I added, like, this one extra bit of information, which is that table getting slammed down. And that helps a lot like with the idea that boom oh whoa what what just happened like it kind of it gives that focus to that action so anyway i'm probably going to run out of time i'm going to go a little bit quicker uh so we see here there's like way more information even like that burst of anger i added that like kind of anticipation and i overshoot and then i allowed him to go into that post uh, you, it's questionable whether or not that was really truly needed. Maybe, you know, that's like three poses. Maybe I could have done it in two poses, which is totally fair. Uh, however, I, I noticed that if I didn't do it, I, it didn't have the right impact. And so this is me just exporting the same thing. By the way, I'm exporting this as just singular images because, and, and for a reason, because uh, if you can do it, uh, I would recommend doing it especially if you're trying to work a little bit quicker and cheaper and whatnot, because it's much better and easier to figure out the timing of things uh, like while doing the actual edit, rather than having to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes you do have to do that, and it's because there's a very um, important camera move going on, and you kind of can't work your way around it. Maybe it's a little bit more of a complex camera move. So anyway, I'm going to play this now. Okay, that was a, a hiccup from Blender. Thank you, Blender. Yeah, okay, anyway. Uh, so one thing that you might not quite notice here, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it later, but that previous version, which contained the same amount of information, is using the same half a script or whatever to give you the same information, uh, it was, I wouldn't say half the length, but it was much shorter. 
uh, didn't feel like it necessarily. It actually felt a little bit longer because it was kind of boring. Because what was happening is uh, there was some information that just simply wasn't there. And then if you linger on it for too long because, oh, it'll be done later, um, when people are viewing it, it just looks insanely boring. So you, your tendency is to start shortening it. And in some cases, that becomes a logistical nightmare later. Because, for example, uh, Jay cannot cover that distance in you know, 10 frames. There's no way. So then you know, you're, you're actually troubleshooting stuff earlier by adding that kind of one bead of information. God damn that word. Um, anyway, so uh, I, just for the fun of it, I was like, you know what? OK, now I've done this. And this is totally not particularly needed for what this workshop is. But I want to emphasize it still that even this, which you could say, oh, that's done, and you throw it you know, down the river, uh, like in the conveyor belt. Uh, the, when you add sound effects or music, it can really change what the thing feels like. And it can really change how it's going to be edited together. And, and you might need to go back into shots and try to like refigure them out. Because the sound might add a beat that actually makes the thing funnier or less funnier or whatnot. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And this is just me like grabbing some sounds from freesound.org, which is not sponsoring me. I just uh, I like grabbing some stuff from them, and I'll credit them at the end. Uh, so I'll just play this. Thank you, Blender. Can I like do a hard refresh and it'll just like take all of the, I don't remember the shortcut, sorry. I changed it so many times. I do believe there is no sound. Well, that is embarrassing uh, <laughs> because I have my thing plugged in. Maestro? No, nothing. We got nothing. Okay. Well, you will find more on studio.blender.org. I don't know. If <laughs> I'm a little bit screwed here. Sorry about that. Well, I can move on then. No worries. Sorry. Yeah, I can. But uh, I'll just tell you right now that. Um, so maybe unplug the thing and just use the microphone. Yeah. Oh, yes. Whoa. That's like. Okay. Maybe the problem is on my end. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, we'll, we'll put this online and people will see it. It's, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Um, so, uh, OK, so we made this thing, this version. By the way, that, that like with, with the audio, I did find that there were some beats there that were kind of funny and then has some stuff. And it ended up being slightly longer because those beats added something. Uh, I will say also, uh, when you have that kind of a situation and there's like some comedy to be found there in like in for example a confusion like oh wait a minute um, you have to pair, cherry pick which parts to uh, emphasize to like kind of milk uh, if you do it for too many things the whole thing just doesn't become that funny and I think that's what was happening here also I was putting too much emphasis on too many things that I found funny but then when you take a step back and you look at it, it's like, well, that's, now it's just getting kind of long and boring. So you have to, uh, yeah, to figure out those beats. Anyway, um, let's make the kind of more cinematic version. And I wanted to just allow you guys to think, obviously, all of you have seen a lot of different movies, but a lot of different filmmakers and whatnot. But just think of it this way. If you gave that little snippet of a script and you gave it to Wes Anderson, he's going to make the Wes Anderson version of this. And is that one better or worse? I don't know. Like, but it's going to be his take on it, uh, and you know, and it's going to obviously look different than if Tarantino did it. So uh, it doesn't matter if it's live action or animation or whatnot. Uh, it's a medium, not a genre. Just so you know. So uh, uh, just think of that because the way I'm doing it, there's a million other ways of doing it, and it just so happens I chose uh, certain. Um, choices to do it, and I, I want to give you a little bit of my thought process on that. So just as an example, uh, how would you start this? Let's now, uh, um, let's now convey the information, but we're going to utilize editing. We're going to utilize, you know, shots. Uh, okay, so we have, like, we have to establish that they're in an ice cream parlor, right? And it's Rex sitting by himself, and then Jay comes over with some ice cream. Okay. Uh, so I have some ideas. This is just like top of my head here as I like just wrote it down. Uh, 
So one might be, okay, let's do the kind of classic established shot outside the parlor, and then we follow it with another shot that's like inside, a wide shot. Um, I don't want to do that because I don't want to have to model an outside of the parlor. Okay, I'm a bit lazy for that, for this example. So uh, maybe we just start off with a wide shot inside the parlor. That is like a safe choice, it's totally legitimate. Uh, you could do something different. So, hurry, do I go back? Uh, you could start out with, for example, I know that uh, Jay is going to walk over with an ice cream to Rex. Uh, well, what if we kind of follow that ice cream? That way we're conveying that we're in a place where ice cream is being given out and whatnot. So we're kind of relaying that information, but in a different way. We're kind of zoomed in rather than showing it in grand scale. We could do something uh, even more complicated, perhaps, is that maybe uh, you, this, this is a fictional cartoon place, by the way. I don't think this exists anywhere. But what if there is a, uh, an ice cream parlor waitress that has a tray of ice creams? Originally, this is going to be a bar, and then I realized that is like too risque, perhaps, for uh, these guys are underage, by the way. They shouldn't be drinking. Um, so what if it's like, you know, a tray of ice creams are going by, and it's kind of passing Rex, and you see him looking at them longingly and you do a handoff to Rex. So that's, you know, and that's, you know, one of those tools in your tool belt where you do these different types of camera moves that can work, can also not work, become compli complicated. Uh, what if you start out with something like a trucking shot going over, you know, the selection of ice creams, and then you kind of end up uh, with Rex. That way we establish the ice cream and all that stuff and go to Rex. Um, we could do also that classical thing. He has like a menu of ice creams and then he kind of folds it, puts it down. So we're like, oh, we're in a place that sells ice creams. He puts it down. Hey, it's Rex. And so we get from one information to the other. So out of all of these, and this is like not the definitive list, you could go on and on and on and just try to be super creative about how to relay pretty much the same information. Uh, so I chose this because uh, I figured that for this demonstration, it will be more interesting to show a handoff where you, uh, the camera is, is following a subject and then you hand it off gracefully to another one. Uh, this uh, is not as easy as, it sim uh, as simple as it sounds necessarily because if you're actually doing it, uh, you have a lot of moving parts and getting the timing just right uh, is sometimes a bit annoying. Um, so again, we'll do those like kind of beats of information to the viewer. By the way, these kind of beats, I always do it. I always do this list and it just helps me also to just condense the ideas down to one by one little uh, moments. Uh, but in this case, it's not the same list. Yes, in broad strokes, it's the same information, but now the information is being conveyed in a different order. So for example, here at the beginning, it's ice cream. So we see an ice cream. And now, as the ice cream is walking through, we, we realize, oh, it's maybe an ice cream parlor, which is a totally real establishment. Uh, and then it's going past Rex, who looks at it longingly, so we're introducing Rex. And then now we have kind of Jay walking in with his ice cream, yada, yada. So I always do this, and then I, you know, and you go back to it and you maybe redo it if you're thinking a, a, about a different approach. But uh, what I start off doing is trying to group together what uh, beats of information should be in a singular shot. And then I start going through, you know, I, I actually, what if that handoff shot, it actually keeps being on Rex and then uh, he's given the ice cream and we have all of that, like him with the ice cream, with the sprinkle shaker in that singular shot. And then in the foreground, boom, something big, big gets slammed right in front of him. And he's like, whoa, what is that? And then we can have a reverse shot, a reveal of the big ice cream. So, you know, so, so the next one would be Jay is there with his ice cream happily and so on and so forth. So I, I kind of go over all the different things and here I'm, I'm roughly ending up with eight different uh, shots. And uh, there's another way of doing this, by the way, you know, like, you know, I always do this, but then how do you uh, vet this idea a little bit further? In this case, it's a relatively simple setup, but in other cases it might be more complicated, like, you know, if you have a fight scene. And in that case, it might be helpful to do something along the lines of kind of floor plan. Um, so I just did a, a quick draft of what that may look like here. Uh, so for example, with the first shot, you have you know, that kind of tray of ice creams going uh, past Rex. So it has a bit of an A and a B to it, just you know, uh, trying to simplify it here a little bit. So this would be the A of the shot, and here's kind of the B of the shot, where Jay is coming over with an ice cream. 
uh, and then we got reversal to J. Uh, Rex is looking kind of up and down at his own tiny ice cream and looking at this massive ice cream. And then we got the, a two shot where Rex is getting angrier and angrier. And then what I was thinking is instead of uh, doing this eruption of anger from, uh, from Rex, instead what if we have like him about to do it, but we're cutting to Jay and Jay is kind of getting covered in shadow. And he, he doesn't realize it yet. He's just kind of, you know, having fun with his own ice cream. And then he's like, wait, whoa, and he looks up. And, uh, and then we kind of reverse shot that into Rex looking down and he just looks like a, a huge mountain of anger. Uh, and then we kind of flipped that and in that, that shot, Jay needs to look very small in the frame and be looking kind of pathetic. And then he kind of starts turning the table and then we maybe go back to a wider shot where we see the two ice creams swap again. So something like that. So this is one way of conveying it. And obviously if you like overlay it all together, you're like, oh, it's a mess. But there's a lot of great information here, especially one of them is the action line. As you may notice, there's a very clear action line. So uh, we got Jay and we got Rex and the camera is never crossing to this side, right? We're just kind of living in this area. And for something like this, that's great and easy when you have something like a fight scene where things are getting slammed and going all over the place you it, it becomes way more messy and then you uh it gets trickier to figure out the action line at any given moment and making sure that you don't cross it when you don't mean to cross it and things get confusing okay just quickly there's another way of doing this of course well what about you know thumbnails and i'm not talking about special fancy storyboards i'm talking about thumbnails and i intentionally made shitty thumbnails just to prove that point uh, drawn with my mouse, with, with my right hand, and I draw with my left. Um, so we have something like this. So you have three ice creams, they're going there, and then uh, revealing Rex, and you know, you got that kind of B of the shot, and then you got uh, Jay looking at, you know, eating his big ice cream. We got Rex looking up and down at his tiny one, and he gets, you know, uh, he's kind of confused, and then he's getting angrier and angrier. And then now the shadow is crossing over. And this is like, I just have one for each of these. Uh, uh, Shadow is covering over Jay, and he's looking up, and there's Rex super angry at him. And then you have Jay tiny in the frame, and he, you know, he gives a pathetic smile and starts making the table turn. And then, uh, then you, you know, you might have that shot where it gets flipped. Anyway, so this is one other way of conveying this information. And I would say, like, uh, I, I always do that list. Uh, I think that's like a super healthy thing that you should do. Uh, nobody taught me this. This was just something I started doing myself. So I have no idea if the professionals are doing this. Um, with the floor plan, I, I, often, I often do it. And that is uh, partially because it also eliminates confusion when uh, talking to the team. And because if you're talking about some shots, you may realize that uh, one, uh, a person is thinking about the entire thing from the other angle, and, and, but you don't know it. And then that causes a lot of confusion. So this is like a super great way of just simplifying it and also vetting some of your own ideas. The thumbnails, uh, I don't do it that often, to be honest. I should do it more often. And it's, it's partially laziness. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, or, you know, a tight deadline. That's another one. So if we just look real quick at the more cinematic uh, d -d 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 thing. So this is, um, and I, I just wanted to mention to you guys, um, you know, I, 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 of course, I don't just take what I did previously where I have these guys acting out the stuff and then I just plant cameras back and forth. It doesn't work. Like that's not, that's not doing it uh, on a shot level that is like lazily sprinkling some shots after the fact and you won't get the framing you need and whatnot. So just throwing it out there that, that uh, most of the stuff that I did previously, it, it was not to great benefit for this treatment. Uh, uh, I just mean an actual posing and, and all of that stuff. So any, anyway, um, first thing I wanted to do is, you know, I'm, I'm putting the character there and I'm figuring out uh, that first shot, it has a B side to it. And I want to figure out where is that and what is the right angle? Because it's doing a lot of heavy lifting. I know that it's coming off a handoff, so it needs to be at a certain reasonable height uh, that is kind of plausible. But at the same time, uh, I know that what ha happens at the end of that shot is something in the foreground gets slammed down and it's supposed to feel like this big thing. Uh, and I will... 
uh, admit that this was difficult. I was really trying to figure it out and I was trying many different lenses and angles and, and I, I started realizing that like the rule of thumb when you wanna make something feel really big in front and then small in the back, like one of the things you can do is like, oh, wider lens and then this feels small and this or whatever. Uh, but then that causes other problems like there's way too much information coming into the backdrop. This is a thing that you don't experience with 2D because you just draw whatever you want in 2D. But in 3D, you get the actual information there. Uh, sometimes you can cheat it, but yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't want to go too far in that direction. But uh, what I kind of ended up as, I just, I was trying so many different things. Like um, what if also you have the thing getting slammed down there uh, and then the camera kind of goes kind of up and it accentuates like maybe the height of it. But then that starts, you know, I, I, wanted, I wanted to have like that cherry on top. That f started feeling like it was focusing on the cherry and he was like envious about the cherry. And I felt like that's maybe accidentally conveying the wrong information. Uh, so there's a lot of troubleshooting going on right now of me just exploring uh, different uh, camera angles and whatnot. Uh, this is where I was relatively happy with it, like where it, it's, um, uh, oh yeah, sorry, I went slightly flatter, that's right. Uh, I, I went with a slightly narrower lens, I think 60 or something, and this is, yeah, this is, this was another thing, like, do you actually just cover him and then you have like a, like coming from behind? And I thought, you know what, maybe that's kind of funny. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go for this, this, I think, uh, checks all the boxes to a certain degree. There's a, there's a compromise everywhere, of course. And then you cut the, got the reverse. By the way, I just want to show you in three dimensions. Uh, that ice cream is not on that table at all. Like, I don't know if you're noticing this, but, you know. So you have this shot, and it's like, yeah, it's totally plausible. The thing, you know, the thing, he's there, and it plonks down, and he's like, what? But uh, in actuality, it's like way off the table. That table is a different size now because I've ha I had to like try to cheat it so it would kind of fit that frame better and give plausibility. Uh, he's not, he's in the air. I don't, like it's all over the place. But as long as it's being conveyed properly and it's plausible in the shot, I'm happy. Um, similar stuff going on the reversal uh, with Jay who is kind of hovering off the ground and uh, I even, uh, this is, I swapped out the ice cream. Because this is the previous one here because uh, I want to accentuate just how tall and big it should be. It should be higher than his head. Uh, and this is where character design can like shoot you in the leg also because his head is already enormous in length, in like height. So uh, yeah, sometimes uh, you, that's when the troubleshooting really kicks in. When you have designs, you have to work around them or with them. Uh, trying out different uh, lens choices and then what would the reversal be something like this perhaps and then we got the two shot and then you know does this work or I'm not a huge fan of how it cuts their legs I'm already trying to cheat it a little bit you know some stuff is hovering off the ground and I'm trying to you know I'm also like stretching them slightly to try to like see if I can fake some stuff and I tried another version where what if I cut it uh, a little bit higher and in that case, I'm squishing them together also, if you might know it. So everything is ma malleable um, as you craft these things, as long as you're within reason and plausibility. Um, let's see. Du -du -du -du. Yeah, so this is kind of where I ended up with. And, they, and, you know, I won't necessarily bore you guys. Like so, some of these shots that I, that I did now for this, you know, are, uh, by the way, amazing uh, uh, modeling work and whatnot I for for this uh, tray I just you know slapped the thing together and that kind of feels like arms I guess and then the noise modifier on it so it kind of uh, goes there but you know inside the shot itself eh, it's not too bad you know not too bad well, it's like playing every frame don't ever have that setting that's not a great setting I don't like that there we go I was actually giving you um, sensation of timing uh, you know just to give you a slight note on on making something like this like this kind of handoff obviously I'm using also uh, uh, like a focal pull going on there uh, but one one of the most annoying things was finding like because there's like moving everything is malleable right and I, I, I already faked uh, Rex to be at a certain height and whatnot so I'm cheating him a lot but then uh, this tray needed to not reveal my cheat. 
So uh, making sure that it like uh, covers those damn feet hovering from the air. Like, you know, there's a lot of these like spinning plates that you're doing to just uh, make it just right. So you kind of get away with it. Um, I hated that, uh, that, um, that shaker uh, because I found out as I was doing this version that it was like always in the way of each shot. I had to like awkwardly position it so it was like kind of clipping on the table. And then when the table was turning, it kept turning with everything. And it just was really annoying to me. And I, but I was like, it's too late now. I still, I have it, but what do I do? And then I realized, well, it's Rex. Rex is kind of an asshole. So I just made him toss it behind him and, and he doesn't care. So I was like, well, it kind of works on a narrative level and the, the kind of character he is. Um, so, you know, so this shot obviously had to be like kind of animated in, inside um, this file, but for shots that don't need to be because they don't have any complicated, um, uh, complicated camera moves or whatnot, in some cases, uh, it's just a singular frame or just two frames. And, and I wanted to show it, just go right ahead for the edit for this. So here is the edit, and I can just play it to you guys. That's a singular frame. It doesn't need to say anything more. <laughs> and I decided that this was funnier. I tried doing that other shot where you know you go from this and you cut to that other shot, but it's just not as funny. And I don't like the um, silhouette. It always comes into a silhouette and it just doesn't. He doesn't look as menacing now when you cut to the side. So I just like the idea that, okay, you know what? It, it's roughly conveying the same information, but it's just putting the emphasis on he gets the small one uh, and gi gives away the, the big one. Uh, after making this version, uh, I, got, you know, I got some feedback from people and I realized I'm putting too much emphasis on things that I find funny. Like there's a lot of things you can kind of milk here and there and it's just too much in general. So things like, you know, him like, kind of a thing, you know, all of these things are kind of slower than they perhaps should be. Uh, so I made another version and, you know, I won't bore you with the details in the actual Blender thing here, so I'll just go straight to the actual version of it. And uh, you'll, you'll notice some changes. This should have sound, but it doesn't, so I'm sorry. Uh, the sound consists of like awkward elevator music in the backdrop and, uh, uh, you know, obviously like little things getting enhanced. So like him throwing the, the shaker, you hear glass shattering behind it. It, it, it. it fills out the scene a lot, of course. So here we're playing it. It's a bit faster. And here, uh, I was getting annoyed with the fact that when we cut to that reversal, we have two things. I'll talk about it in a bit. My very old computer is barely keeping up with the caching here. Okay. Relatively simple. So, you know, just, just to give a slight note, I, I was getting really annoyed at the fact that this big thing is being slapped here, and there's a bit, in the next shot, we know it's going to be revealed. But it used to be that we would cut to this. And it's not too bad per se, it's just, it depends, uh, has to do with his design and whatnot. But basically, the eye fix is on two things uh, instead of one thing. And I wanted to figure out a relatively cheap way, you know, cartoony way perhaps, to try to uh, solve that. And I figured, you know what, Rex is like supposed to be a kind of a small guy. The hat kind of doesn't help here, by the way. That, okay, you cut to, here is this huge thing. And then kind of he comes and uh, 
sits down and has it. So it, like, it's, just, it's just problem solving, just trying to figure out like, what flows, what doesn't flow. Then there's small things like uh, making, uh, making Jay kind of look down at the ice cream, look back up. Uh, it's, it's a bit 50-50. You, you could say that it's not necessarily needed, or you could say, oh, it kind of uh, enhances the idea that he just now made that realization. He put two and two together. Uh, for better or worse, you know. Uh, so, okay. I want to then just go over a little bit the edit comparison. So it's here at the bottom, I had that first simple version. And you can see that uh, it's, it simply doesn't have enough information to be an accurate representation of what that thing is. So if you gave that to the editor, the editor is going to try their best, but they're not going to be able to uh, do an accurate evaluation. Also, I don't think it conveys the ideas enough to, for us to say, oh, that works or that doesn't work. And that's, that's the job I have, is to like, give it the best representation it can have, and then we can look at it together and judge, uh, is it funny, is it not funny, is it, do we you know, change this or that or whatnot. Uh, the more detailed version, obviously, is a bit longer. When, I'm, when I added a sound pass, uh, because there were a couple of beats in there, it got slightly longer just because of these little beats. The cinematic version, very much longer. You know, I was indulging in a couple of the moments there, but to be fair also with the theatrical detailed version, I was indulging there also. So I would say it is a fair comparison when you look at the theatrical, theatrical, this sounds weird, theater detailed version, the 22 seconds, uh, it's a fair comparison to the cinematic version, the, the first version before I started trimming things down a bit. Uh, it's basically twice the length. And it follows, uh, it follows a little bit that logic that when you just have actors acting out the beats right in front of you and you're not saying anything with the visual language of shots, uh, it has a certain length. As soon as you start telling the same thing with shots, on average, yeah, it's like twice the length, sometimes three times the length. Uh, and that's just the inherent uh, medium of, of having to cut to a thing, because every time you cut to a thing, you're, you're putting people in a new perspective, and they need to take in their information, and whatever that thing is, you're putting an emphasis on it, uh, instead of this, you know, theatrical, uh, theater thing. Uh, some takeaway notes, I am totally out of time, so quickly. So, totally recommend writing down that beat list, uh, no matter what, if you're trying to figure out shots. Uh, the floor plan, I like it, not everybody likes it, but I think uh, when you're in a team, it's great to communicate to others. Thumbnails can be great. Uh, I don't necessarily think they're always necessary. It kind of depends on also if you're already working with some great um, uh, storyboards, you might be using some of that. But of course, a storyboard will never actually fulfill the role of you know, figuring out this, the cinematic language. Uh, the highly recommend making sure you are specific in what bones to use, fewer the better. Uh, whenever you're in doubt at starting out where to place the camera, just start out at the height of the, you know, the eye of the character. Uh, B, like really test out, A, B test shots in the beginning when, like, try different camera lenses and just A, B, A, B. Because uh, if, you, if you just start out with one thing, and you start you know, adding the beats and the, the poses and whatnot. Later down the line, when you realize, ah, oh, that should have been a wider lens, uh, you can't use the same information exactly, like you can't just change the lens and it'll just work out uh, no problem. You'll have to adjust things. And the, so the earlier you make that choice, the better. Uh, fewest amount of beats, God damn it, I used the word again. Uh, of poses to, or of drawings, uh, fewest, uh, the better, uh, but not so much that po people don't understand what the hell is going on. That's, that, that's the limit. Uh, but no matter how well you will do, uh, you will always have a producer saying you could have done it cheaper. doesn't matter if you're like, oh man, one drawing lesson, nobody would have understood it. Uh, basic facial expressions might break, uh, make or break an idea. That means that a very cheap smile might go a long way for a joke or whatever. Doesn't, you don't have to be a great animator to craft that out. But if the idea is there, then that's enough. Uh, uh, yeah, like I said, if you oversimplify something, beats are going to be missing, and then you're in trouble later down the line. You may not realize it now, 
but you're actually troubleshooting stuff for stuff down the line. Um, I just said this. Um, and, you know, as you heard with the sound, uh, it can really change a lot. So, you know, just, just, just be aware. And this is also why it's, it's great to have, you know, if you're on a big team, if you have an editor, you're throwing stuff to the editor and you keep on working. And then later the editor will knock on your door and be like, hey, can you take a look at this? Uh, it's working great, except, you know, I think this shot needs to be slightly different. And you watch it together and you see, and you're like, oh yeah, you're right. And then you have to maybe redo a shot or whatnot. But that back and forth is uh, very valuable. Uh, so obviously, you know, I stole this from this website called studio.blender.org, these two characters, there's a lot of them there. Uh, and then as the, uh, the beautiful audio, here's the credits for the audio that I was grabbing. So thank you very much.